Hey guys, Mike here. So yes, this was an old boy day in the market. And let me tell you, all time new highs all the way around on futures, indexes, you name it. We're throwing out all time highs all over the place, okay? And I understand it was a very strange all time high in a way because there were certain areas that didn't participate at all, especially two stocks for someone to talk about. And maybe you can figure out and help me go, what in the world happened? Because they got totally rug pulled as soon as the market opened and everything else went see ya to the moon. Now, of course, we're going to discuss what happened because it was the perfect scenario, right? I mean, the data that hit lined up perfectly for those folks looking for rate cuts and all that good stuff. And the 10-year got crushed and all of it, okay? Now, I'm also going to go into and pay very close attention. We just set all-time highs not long ago, right? So now all of a sudden we're setting them again and I want to show you why this could have legs to go even higher and I'm going to show you again I'm just going to show you the data take it for what it's worth all that good stuff but sentiment and breath and all that fun stuff and liquidity it means something okay it definitely means something so we're going to go into that as well and so when you look right here what happened the perfect storm right you end up having CPI data come in under what was expected month over month the year over year was just fine as you can see uh but when you look at it i mean obviously it did come down yes i know what you, i can hear your scream right now going no way cpi come in and and, and they fudge the numbers and believe it or not they actually did take some stuff out that was actually true i know coco was one of them because uh, they've been going through the roof and i think they took something else out as well but on top of that, what happened was retail sales came in lower than expected. They came up completely flat, zero, and they were expecting 0.4% as estimates as you can see by the chart. And you can see retail sales have been coming in soft, right, over the last few reports and stuff. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see where this goes. And again, also manufacturing data came out, which I'm not going to show you from the New York State Manufacturing, and it was disastrous, all right, absolute disastrous. So that combination of what's bad for the economy, Good for the stock market and then CPI coming in better, right? Which means, oh, the Fed's got to cut, right? And so what's the bond market do? We fell out of this channel. Boom. It collapses down. Goes into support right here. And if I zoom in, because this is very important, this right here is the channel. You see the support, right? And so if we get a bounce, we have to see if it breaks that support, oh boy, right? And I told you, if it breaks the channel, that's good for the market as far as what it likes. It's like jet fuel, right? Especially for your high beta stuff. Now you can see when we broke down this channel before, right? You we came down to that same level, tested a couple times, bounced, and then fell through it. And once we fell through it, it was like a rainbow fall, right? And that's when we went on this huge rally in the market. Now, of course, when the 10-year drops, what do they go, what do they go do here? They they start increasing the odds of the rate cuts, right? For September, I believe November, December is what they're doing. And you can see it right here. I'm gonna zoom in. See? So all of a sudden, to stay current, they went from 35 to 24 for no rate cut. And then they increase the odds of actual rate cut coming in here, okay? So that's what this is all about. Remember, get ready to play the rate cut game. Now, we did hit all-time highs. You can see right there. And it was, I mean, once it went through it, baby, it just kept going. We were waiting on pullbacks. And it was very, very few pullbacks, okay? We look on a smaller time frame here. You can see it came busted. It gapped up to the all-time high, came down, retested, and then just melted up all day long with very little pullbacks. I mean, it would just come up. Come down this fair value gap, boom, move up. Again, very few pullbacks, okay? And then, of course, as soon as the market closed, or right at like two minutes before, you know, we started coming down. So we know we have to come down and get liquidity can continue to move up, right? That's usually how it works. You you break a relative equal high or some major level, prior day high, prior week high, prior month high, all-time high. Then you come back down inside, grab some liquidity where the orders are set, and then move back up. So that's what we got to figure out. We're going to move up down overnight. Are they gonna keep trying to melt this thing up? But eventually, you're gonna see a move down and start grabbing liquidity. You can just guarantee it. And we'll see what they do overnight with this one for sure. But understand too, this isn't just here, okay? I've showed you this before. Those who are new, you wouldn't know this. But understand, broker dealer index, all-time high. German, uh, DAX, all-time high. Many, many stock markets around the, uh, the world, all-time high. I think it was like 42 I showed you last time, which is many, many months ago before we set our all-time high. But it's not just here you're seeing this kind of stuff happen. Now, this is the important part. I want to look at and compare it when we, we recently set all-time highs to now, where we are setting all-time highs, okay? And the reason why, you could have legs up on this. And there's a reason. And if we go back, you can see right here, we came up, tested a couple times, failed. And then right there around January 19th, 2024, uh, we actually set 
uh, the new all time high. And so you see right there, we were already in greed. We're at 73. You start getting in the 70s and 80s on this thing. And that's when you're like, okay. And again, what happened? It went up to extreme greed. Remember, we got extreme greed above it. And if we go back and look, what was happening during this time range, right? We went on a run, right? It just kept running up. You got these small little pullbacks because that's how it goes, right? Coming up, reach down, grab some liquidity, move up. Same thing, okay? And so that's what happened there. Now, if we look at basically what's happening, I want you to come back over to the Fear and Greed Index with me and look at this. Obviously, you can see we fell off a cliff there. But once you stay up in extreme greed, especially, that's when you got to start getting worried, right? When you get to extreme greed, that's usually how it works. But even if you go back to the left, right, this is when we sold off from July and all that. Again, we got to extreme greed, we sold off. So I'm telling you, once you get between like 70 to 80, somewhere in there, that's when it's like, okay. And it can stay there for a while, though, as I'm showing you. And where are we at right now? 59. We just made it in greed. We were not in greed yesterday or the week before. And when, when you actually look at this, you know, when we started to move back up, we were actually in right here, fear, right? And so as far as sentiment, we have room. What's the other one, right? Like I told the members, liquidity stable, financial conditions are still loosening and the 10 year yields falling out of that channel. Okay. And what do I mean with liquidity? This, this is the Fed's balance sheet, which they're, they're decreasing the roll off of, right? They're going to start decreasing the roll off of the bonds. Treasury's starting to do what? They're going to start buybacks in June, right? And so this is staying stable. It don't have to be going up. For the stock market to be happy, just stay stable. If it goes up, that's even better. Financial conditionings. What's this doing? Still loosening, right? And it's kind of doing, and it's going against what the Fed was trying to do for the longest time. But again, on this chart, it measures risk, credit, leverage, all that good stuff. If it's going down, the market's going up. Okay, that's just the way it is. So all that is stable, and the Fed and the Treasury is behind the bond market to provide stability, and the market really likes that. What else? You got these equal weight ETFs, right? They're not at all time highs. QQEW, right? Equal weighted uh, ETF for the QQQ. RSP, equal weight ETF for the RSP, or for the SPY, excuse me. Boom. They're not there yet. So if those stocks start to get bought up and you see those pushing up, that's going to help the market, okay? And we go back. If you're curious about where this can go, and I'm not saying it's going here, I'm saying this is all this is, is saying they're saying it, it can go though, if they want it to go. And you kind of saw that today right? 5,400, these are your film levels, right? Uh, 55, 25, believe the top of that one. And then if you're a Spire QQQ person, the film levels here provided by Trend Spider, you're looking at 530, anywhere to 535, 45 Qs, anywhere from like 450 to 470, it looks like. And so again, sentiment matters, breath matters, liquidity matters, all that stuff, okay? And we are going to summer months and it's kind of like, eh, right? We'll see how it goes because because volume and especially on this push up volume has been decently low but on during the summertime volume gets low people are on vacations all that good stuff okay and so again and that reminds me at the end of this video i'm going to show you a clown uh that came on um one of the main news stations from the sec he used to be the sec chair and he said something about the GameStop stuff i forgot to mention that at the beginning but i'm gonna show you why he said what he said right and, and understand what these guys are all about okay and why they're not looking out for retail uh, you know, traders or investors, they're looking out for the big firms. Now, of course, what loves it when yields get dropped like a rock? Well, that's TLT, right? It's been setting, what do you want to call it, a bull flag, whether you want to call it a declining channel, you can call it whatever you want to call it. Again, don't worry about the names of these things, but when you look at it, obviously it broke out of this channel today, finally. I mean, it's been like months now, right? Just sitting there continuing to decline. Does that mean it's going to continue to go higher? We're going to see because it's coming into resistance, right? Well, a level was support. Now it's resistance. And so it's a time for it to move up. And a lot of people are dog cost averaging into this thing. It would make sense if you want DCA and stuff, but just be careful. I mean, we've we've been through this dollar cost averaging this thing before and you see it tank, right? So again, if the yields find support and start to move up or something happens, right, in the credit market, whatever it is, then yes, you're going to be down even farther in your TLT. So just kind of keep that in mind. If it can break above that, you can clearly see the levels that it's going to. I mean, if you just pull out and just look at those levels, you know, you can say right here around 96 right there, that would be a good one, right? Good target. And then we move up again. You can see another level right there, okay? So again, right around 100 bucks. So keep those in mind. This continues to move. Now, SMCI finally broke out. Semiconductors were on fire today. And so this one can, I mean, you saw it being a big mover today, right? And I think obviously NVIDIA will have everything to do with these semiconductor stocks. I think all these big ones got sold off after earnings, if I remember correctly. 
And so this one's finally broken out. And when they break out like this, especially these high flyers, these low floats type of stocks, they can really start churning. And again, this is, it, you kind of easy to see the levels, right? I mean, right around a thousand dollars, um, to a thousand, thousand fifteen. And if it gets past that anywhere from a thousand seventy five to eleven fifteen. So, I mean, keep those in mind, but again, a lot of this is going to have to do with NVIDIA. And I can't say stress that enough. They had a huge day uh, today itself. And of course, that's why you see SMH like going to the moon and stuff. It's, it's not set an all time high yet. But when you look at it, that right there, what you're seeing, this is a weekly chart. It's just following that 20 week up, right? So if you ever want to follow SMH and look at a great place, the dollar cost average in this one, or to get the heck out, you look at that 20 week moving average on the weekly chart and you can see when it bounced and when it's rejected multiple times right so this is definitely a good one to look at obviously and again this one will depend on nvidia as well so if it breaks that 20 week come back up and retest most likely and fails yeah it's, it's going to be bad news uh, for this one which means bad news for semi investors and stuff so of course because i mean I, I forgot the percentage nvidia makes up of this one is quite high as a matter of fact but your big ones make up the majority of this one and that leads me to two that got rug pulled today tesla Again, almost 4% drop right at open. It popped up and then boom. And, and that was like news candles, right? And it did nothing the rest of the day. But when I came over here and I kept looking at news and we're asking the Discord, I mean, I just couldn't find anything. I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't, I don't think it has to do with his package being voted on. Maybe that was it. Maybe, that, maybe that's what happened. But it, it's crazy to drop a stock that much just on a vote on his package. But maybe that was his, his earnings package or whatever. But again, I don't... I don't think that was it. So if you happen to find something, let me know. But that one did literally nothing all day. And again, the reason why I don't think that was it, because when you look at the other EVs, all of them were red. Like none of them participated besides this garbage stock workhorse down here, which is probably a short squeeze, you know, sitting at 22 cents. But all of them went red, right? And it didn't matter whether American, Chinese, whatever. And so I don't really know what happened there. And let me know in the bottom if you do, because that was just that was just very strange, right? The other one was Amazon, right? When I, as soon as it opened, boom. This thing dropped like a rock, and then at least it did somewhat, tried to make a comeback the rest of the day. And so, again, I looked in the news on this one. The only news that even came out was them putting, I think, $8 billion into Germany, uh, investing. And it's, it's an investment, of course, for the company. That was the only thing. So if that's what dropped them, I mean, that's the only thing I could find. I didn't see anything really negative about the company at all and, and it was a lot of money so maybe the market freaked out or whatever about them putting that much into the market and it was either that or again we have sat here and we have talked about this what like double top formation again i don't expect this to play out at all okay i mean there's room there's rumors warren buffett bought amazon which i still got to try to confirm i hadn't seen it but it's all over twitter right now but i don't see it popping in after hours like chubbs i don't think so but again i don't expect this to play out if anything it would come down to like 175 177 and then probably bounce unless there's some crazy news. But let me know in the comments if, if you saw anything on those two stocks. Again, we talked about it. I could, I just couldn't find anything that would make it rug play that when the market was just going crazy up, right? And you always look at those sectors and those other sectors that didn't participate at all on this move up, by the way. And so it was, it was kind of interesting to see. But I, I will uh, go with this right here real quick before I get to earnings. And we do have some big earnings tomorrow uh, as well. And some more red folder news, which should affect the market in the morning. But it was this, and you guys emailed me this, right? And asked me about it. This was an, a former SEC chairman saying this. Basically, he's addressing what, you know, Warren Kitty was doing and the GameStop and AMC situation. Like, should it be legal and stuff? It's not insider trading. That's, that's, that's clear on the Bless he, and he's trading on his own information. That's why it's not in, insider trading. But is this is this something that we should be tolerating in our markets? You know, whether it's legal or illegal, I don't think so. And that's why I say, why doesn't he? You know, okay, what does that mean not very, to tolerate? Was, so the idea, I would think, is you look at this more in the context of market manipulation, mm -hmm. right? And the question is, are you allowed to manipulate the market? People, by the way, publish things all the time and they say, "Hey, I like this stock," and they you know, hope that other folks follow them. Is that market manipulation? Gen generally not. Maybe, maybe, generally maybe not. not. So what is the distinction in your mind as somebody who ran this department and who's looking at and cares about the integrity of these markets? Well, that's why, that's why I'm saying, okay, we can, we can discuss what are exactly the facts and circumstances around the publication right. of this tweet and the like. But in, but in the meantime, if you care about the markets and you care about investing, come on this program. 
Right. Tell people, tell people why you did this. And you have to understand, guys, this was a former SC chairman, right? But this is a lot of the resumes. This guy was an attorney. And what was his scope of practice? It was mergers and acquisitions, right? So a lot of his clients were Goldman Sachs, all the big boys. Okay. He had all kinds. Of, I mean, look at the companies down below, right? So he also helped multiple corporations raise money through initial public offerings, right? Alibaba, you'll recognize a lot of these different companies, you know, Barclays Capital. And so he worked for them, right? They were his clients. So you have to understand in America at these large positions, the SEC chairman and even the medical industry, uh, the ones in, uh, I forgot the name of the title, whatever, it's over all of healthcare. Like they are insiders to the big boys. Like they get placed here for a reason in these positions to ensure that these large Wall Street firms can do whatever they want to do. That's why you rarely see any any kind of investigation is going on right now. If you or I do stuff like who's he talking about? He's talking about a, a person who's not even working for a Wall Street firm as far as I know or anything. Right. But there's a reason why only one person went to jail originally during the great financial crisis because he was dumb enough to admit what he did. Right. But these people are put in place. And then when they're done, because remember, they're not going to pay a whole lot to be the SEC chairman. Right. He was a lawyer. He's making a lot of money. But after they're done, they get paid for services rendered like presidents do. Right. They get put on these boards, get a lot of stock options, all this good stuff. So that's why you see presidents get paid by Goldman Sachs, Fidelity, to give speeches. For, I'm talking about for hundreds of thousands of dollars, they pay them to give these speeches to them while, after they're out of office because they've already rendered the services, right? By not passing bills, by passing bills, all this good stuff, all right? That's just the way the system works. It sucks, you know, but everybody always wondering, like, who looks out for us? Nobody. Right, nobody. They don't. Okay, that's just the way it is. All right, that's why they were coming off the crypto so hard. Like anything to do with retail, they come after it. You ever notice that? But anything to do with the big firms, they're like, eh, whatever. Anyway, give me that, give me my money after I leave. That's the way it is, unfortunately. So if you're not in this country, you probably don't recognize it. Let me know if it's that way in your country. All right. Now earnings tomorrow. We actually do have some. It's gonna be Walmart, Baidu, uh, JD.com. And John Deere, we'll see if those Chinese companies react like Baba did. Then you have Applied Material in the afternoon. Under Armour is another one. And when it comes to just the red folder news, pre-market, I believe, yep, unemployment claims is going to be hitting. If it comes in soft, yields will drop again. That's what should happen. If it comes in super strong and flips the other way, yields should actually go up. And like I've been saying, the market, I mean the market, I say bond market, right? Forget the stock market has been ignoring all of this stuff, right? It's like, nope. They're going to have to cut. It is what it is. The economy is softening. The consumer is softening. And unemployment is starting to go back up. And, you know, the supposedly CPI is coming down. And understand, I know you don't think it's coming down. Maybe it's not coming down. But you're really focused more on the prices at now. I don't think we notice if coffee goes up $0.07 cents a bag or $0.10 cents or whatever. But, you know, the, the price is way higher. Oh, yeah. Way higher than two years ago. Because there's still just so much money out there unfortunately okay and again if you own a house you know exactly what i'm talking about is your house is probably worth way more than it was before okay and so again yeah, i know it sucks for a lot of people i get it i hear you and stuff but again we're at all-time highs the market can continue to melt up it's not going to be a straight line there will be pullbacks if it decides to do that and there is runway for it to happen it just depends on like i, I have to do research on like the summertime like is it really i mean last summer right we melted up going to the end of july right and then we started to sell off if i remember correctly without looking at the chart august september october yeah and so we did melt up going through the end of july at least and so you know we'll just have to see if that's what's going to be the case this time so let me know on the bottom what you think did they surprise you or not i was surprised with cpi data i'm not gonna lie i thought i definitely think it was coming under projection but it did and when you remove a few things wink wink uh that's what happened so anyway hope you guys have a good one hit the like and subscribe button on your way out and i'll see you tomorrow